Hello lads, welcome back to the channel. I am here when his head, and I am here once again to weave you a tale of the unknown and the horrifying possibilities surrounding one of the most disturbing groups to walk the face of our title-locked moon of Kenshi. And while the validity of this tale is currently lost to time under mounds of volcanic ash and the ruins of what once was, we may yet hope that one day soon we will uncover the definitive truth behind these integumentary thieves. So sit back and listen with your human ears and fill your human bellies as we discuss the possible origins of the Skin Bandits. As we have done in the past, we must first examine who the Skin Bandits are before we can start to ascertain the origins behind their gruesome rituals. Deep to the southeast of the continent, there lies a peninsula forgotten by time and coveted by tech hunters as the ultimate challenge. The ruins of the last great empire sit motionless in time beneath a sea of white-hot ash and toxic fumes, burying the grim history of what once was and the vast riches of knowledge and technology lying in wait for some brave or foolish band of travelers to seek them. Bordering this desolate land of fallen machines and ancient secrets is the volcanic strip known as Sonoris Dark. Acting as a border and obstacle for the cat-hungry tech hunters to overcome before reaching the Ashlands in search of wealth and knowledge, Sonoris Dark is host to one of, if not the most, horrifying band to walk the face of Kenshi. While they may appear human on the surface and their docet tones remain ever convincing, do not let their disguises fool you, my dear viewers. These beings that you see before you are not truly of the organic variety, but instead, the degraded and corrupted remnants of Empire's past looking deeply to become one of the very people they once swore to protect. The Skin Bandits, as they have come to be known, are a cult of human-worshipping skeletons who have seemingly discovered a method in which they can become humans themselves. They roam Sonaris Dark like wild dogs, proclaiming loudly inane validations of their human status for all wary travelers to hear. Indeed, the idea of hearing these devastating and disturbing claims in the night would send even the most seasoned tech hunters running for the hills. Those of the human origins who are lucky enough to meet one of these roaming squadrons will be greeted with promises of peace and fellow human camaraderie but are swiftly and mercilessly beaten until pacified or killed. They will be then dragged back to one of their insidious lairs located throughout the region in the ruins of Empire facilities, and are placed in the most devastating machines to meet a fate far worse than death. The Peeler The flesh will be slowly ripped bit by bit from the occupant until only the meat below remains. The skeletons will then stitch the flesh together into a patchwork menagerie of suits that make even the cannibals to the north look merciful in comparison. The monstrosities of attire are then donned by the followers of this freakish cult and worn proudly as they are reborn as if almost by magic into living, breathing humans, or so their leader would have them believe. Savant the Skin Eater sits at the head of this devilishly deluded conglomerate of patchwork pirates, and funnily enough, he himself is actually a flesh and blood human of the Scorchlander variety. How he came to be the head of the organization is something we will pontificate about soon enough, but in order to do so, however, we must examine Savant as an individual, for someone capable not only of such atrocities, but also maintaining a following of crippled former Second Empire skeletons must have much more to his story than is evident on the surface. At face value, Savant appears to be a run-of-the-mill maniac, spouting semi-religious nonsense to approaching skeletons with promises of transcendence and freedom. But there are numerous clues to the reality behind his psychopathy that suggest that he may in fact be something far worse than initially suggested. You've seen your brothers, Skeleton. You've seen them. Madmen they are. Rampaging around the Ashlands like killing machines. You can't trust them. None of you joyless freaks of nature. 
and those humans that cling to skeletons like bone pups to a wolf. You can't trust them either. They're already afflicted with cinders, and they'll be rampaging as bad as the Skeleton Legion in no time. This line, spoken by Savant, initially suggests his desire to turn skeletons human is based on a hatred for the skeletons themselves. But when we dig deeper, it seems more likely his persona was adopted in order to exploit his damaged followers for his own personal gain, routinely making very clear instructions to bring him any loot they find on their poor victims. And his mention of the Legion tells us even more about his origins. The Legion, you see, is referring to the militant enthralled branch of the Second Empire that still roams throughout the Ashlands at the directive of the Mad Emperor Catlan. As stated at the beginning of our analysis, the Ashlands is a terrifying and desolate place that only the most brave, skilled, or stupid of tech hunters dare to approach. As such, Savant's familiarity with the Legion is an indicator of who he once was and the events leading him to become the Skin Eater. Of course, it's about your... the skeletons. Yes, I thought it might be. What else was there to ask? You've only just met me. I studied skeleton psychology for three years when I was just ten years old, you know. Notice his casual mention of the horrific sight before you, as if it were a trivial act of nature. And while we must take everything this lunatic says with a grain of salt, it's hard to conceive any reason he would need to lie about his qualifications to a group of defective skeletons. So, realizing that he has an extensive knowledge of skeleton processing and old world technology, paired with his skill and ability to survive in the harsh environment of the Ashlands, the story of his origins begins to open up. And one final sequence of dialogue you can experience, should Savant be arrested and turned in, gives the final piece of information I require to piece together this gruesome tale. Apparently, the Skin Eater was just some poor guy held hostage by a bunch of skeleton cultists. Did you hear about their suits? Made of human skin. I'm talking straight up chunks of people stitched together. And that, my friends, is why I never travel south. No thank you very much. With all of this in mind, I am finally ready to present the origins of the Skin Bandits as I see them. Raised in the United Cities as a tech hunter, Savant had become blissfully aware of two things at an early age. The world of Kenshi is a horrible, unforgiving place where the strong survive and the weak are swallowed whole by the sands. And that cats are the only way to become something more than fodder and a scavenger. Blessed with high intelligence and skill, as he was so aptly named, and a drive to become more, Savant studied and trained for years as a tech hunter, but while he excelled at nearly everything in his path in life, he also harbored a darkness, a greed of such magnitude it usurped all other emotions. He was a shell of a human who sought to attain wealth beyond imagination, no matter the cost. Learning throughout his travels of the old empires and technology that they held, and where there is old world tech, there is money and power to be claimed. He also spent several of his formative years researching skeletons as walking nigh immortal historians, digging into the history of the world and studying their psychology. Who were these creatures, these beings that have existed since the dawn of civilization on Kenji? Why has so much history been lost to time if they themselves walked the lands for thousands of years? It was through this study he learned of the skeletons' propensity for logic, their desire for purpose, their deep and unexplained guilt towards humans, as well as their disposition towards hiding the events of Kenji's history. Unbeknownst at the time, these findings would later be used to commit some of his most heinous of crimes. Eventually, through his work, Savant learned of the Ashlands, the seat of the Mad Emperor Catlan and the former superpower of Kenji, and the ultimate opportunity for treasure and glory. With these findings from such a place, he could secure a seat in the upper echelon of society, 
walk above even the highest of nobility, and live without rules or restrictions. This dream fueled him ever forward, and as such, he funded an expedition into the Ashlands themselves. Sometime after entering the Ashlands, Savant learned the truth of the fall of the Second Empire. The atrocities committed by the skeletons against humanity in the name of alleged peace. And it was not long after this discovery, they were attacked by the Legion. And despite their best efforts, most if not all accompanying him were slaughtered in the ensuing chaos. Savant, who was a more than capable combatant, survived the encounter, but he was now trapped with no supplies, no allies, and no treasure to bring back. What was the point of all of this if he didn't secure his prize? He would not return to squalor, looting and living as some kind of lesser being. Days of wandering eventually led him out of the Ashlands into Sonoris Dark, where he eventually discovered an old mining facility. This facility was populated by the remnants of the Second Empire who had managed to avoid the enthrallment process by the Emperor Catlan. But their CPUs had been degraded and burned out over the years as they had no access to processing resets. As they continued to bloat their CPUs with more and more emotional components, they became less and less emotionally stable, until eventually they fell entirely into madness. What was once a desire to protect humanity as penance for the first extinction had become an obsession with humanity surpassing fanaticism and was fueled with a burning desire to shed their horrid guilt-ridden skeleton forms and become those they had worshipped. They swarmed Savant and began to forcibly worship him, making him a strange mix of a deity and prisoner, and he embraced this title both out of self-preservation and as it provided him with the power and worship he always desired. But as supplies began to grow lower and lower, he worried of starvation. In an effort to procure more supplies, he asked the skeletons to fetch him food. In response, they attacked a group of travelers, brought all of their supplies and their corpses back to him. It was in this moment Savant had a realization, a horrifying and monstrous realization. Using his knowledge of skeleton psychology, he began to manipulate the damaged worshippers, securing their undying loyalty by promising to deliver to them the very thing they coveted, humanity. He would use his knowledge of technology and skills that he had developed throughout his time as a tech hunter to create a machine capable of rending the very flesh from its occupants. This flesh would then be bound and sewn into horrific suits for his worshippers to don. Thusly, according to their albeit damaged skeleton logic, effectively becoming what it means to them to be human, a skeleton surrounded by flesh. And while this was going on, Savant would reap the findings and loot from the victims. As such, the skeletons had taken their final step to becoming what we now know as the Skin Bandits. Savant would amass a legion of his own that wanders the borders of the Ashlands, assaulting travelers and explorers, tearing flesh from bone and delivering their supplies and loot to their leader, their messiah. A man who had arrived in search of power and riches, but found that and much more. The mask he had worn his entire life had slipped and he had revealed his true face. And should he be captured and return to his prior life, he would simply don the mask once more, absolving himself of responsibility for his crimes passing it off as if he were just a victim to the skeleton's horrendous insanity. But we, dear viewers, know the truth. That under the veil lies the real face of a monster. That of Savant the Skin Eater.